Joining me now is Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, this uh, U.N. speech uh, running from uh, reporters, today was another disastrous day for Biden on the world stage. But does that translate into any humility at home? Certainly not from Joe Biden and the Democrats. Uh, but you're right, Laura, that this speech was a disgrace at the United Nations. Joe Biden walked into the United Nations and slapped a giant kick me sign on Uncle Sam's back. And in particular, as it relates to China, he bent over backwards to conciliate and appease the Chinese Communist Party. He said, we don't seek a new Cold War. Well, China has been waging a Cold War against America and our workers and our military for decades. So the question is not whether we seek one. The question is whether or not we will fight back in it. Yet Joe Biden wouldn't even say the word China. He's apparently too scared to even mention China's name in a speech addressed to the world's leaders. What kind of signal does that send to them? What kind of signal does it send to the leaders of Beijing? I can tell you what they're doing right now. They are laughing at Joe Biden. Well, speaking of, uh, President Xi decides very smartly, you know, for someone who's a, a you know, gross violator of human rights, he's very clever in adopting the language of the woke crowd. Watch. We need to pursue dialogue and inclusiveness over confrontation and exclusion. We need to build a new type of international relations based on mutual respect, equity, justice, and win-win cooperation. What does equity, justice, and inclusiveness mean for the Uyghurs, Taiwan, and Hong Kong? Yeah, exactly, Laura. So you're talking about a man in a regime that has crushed Hong Kong's autonomy and freedom, that is sterilizing uh, religious and ethnic minorities in northwest China or putting them in gulags, has destroyed thousands of Christian churches across China, yet he presumes to lecture us. And that's because Joe Biden's administration basically accepts those terms. Remember when Tony Blinken went up for a summit in Alaska and got lectured to, or Joe Biden's UN ambassador said that white supremacy was woven through the origins of this nation. And I can tell you, it's not just Xi Jinping. Every two-bit Chinese diplomat and apparatchik around the world goes in to the foreign ministries of countries and tells them that they should not listen to America, they should not lecture China about human rights because America has its own problems with human rights. And that's all because of Joe Biden and his senior cabinet members accepting those terms of debate on anti-American grounds. Senator, in National Review today, there was a piece about how it was, it was well done, how the Republicans should not rescue the Democrats at this point in the $3.5 trillion uh, spending bill, reconciliation bill uh, negotiations. Um, do you agree with that, given this big debate also over the debt ceiling uh, and where that's headed? Well, Laura, yeah, we're not, we're not going to rescue the Democrats in their efforts to try to implement the largest tax hike in history and spend $6 trillion on things like welfare and health care for illegal aliens or welfare for deadbeats who won't work or even look for work. Um, or tax credits for rich people so they can buy electric cars. If the Democrats want to spend $6 trillion on a party line basis, then the Democrats can raise the debt ceiling by that much on a party line basis to cover their own reckless socialist agenda. Oh, we had 19 Republicans agree to that so-called infrastructure bill, which kind of set this on a bit of a glide path, did it not? Well, I don't think you're going to see uh, that many Republicans vote for it in the House next week. And right now, it looks like the Democrats are in total disarray, not just on that infrastructure bill or their massive spending blowout, but on the simple act of trying to keep the government funded next week, even though they control the House, the Senate, and the White House. Republicans have cautioned them for two months now that we will not help them implement this reckless $6 trillion spending plan by raising the debt ceiling. It's time that they took it seriously, that they funded the government to keep it open past next week, and that they avoid any kind of default on our debt next month. Well, we'll be watching what Senator McConnell proposes. I understand there's some new ideas in the works. Senator, great to see you tonight. Thank you. And